Welcome back. If you caught the last one, we just changed the uh, headers and the downpipe on this Dodge Charger behind me to the SRT or Hellcat style. And uh, I went through with it and I got it the plan on getting uh, either high flow cats or uh, different type of a uh, downpipe for it later on and possibly if it's too super obnoxious, uh, go with a muffler on it. Anyways, so it did that and in the place of one of the O2 sensors, and here it is right here, is going to be a wide band. So we have a AEM wide band. This is the style that uh, is able to plug into your OBD2 port in order so that you could do data logging through HP tuners basically seamlessly. So it takes a lot of the frustration out of it just to run this. Uh, for style-wise, it definitely was not my first pick, but for quality-wise and just uh, the staple of the market, that's just kind of AEM right now. So that's the one that I went with. I really wish they... I, I don't know. It, you guys tell me down in the comments, uh, does anybody else find the yellow in their AEM logo in their name just to be kind of tacky? Uh, it's on the gauge too, so it is what it is. And uh, the other way is I'm going to attach it with this. You guys don't want that. With that. So this is just takes the uh, place of uh, one of my uh, my closest, my left hand side uh, vent, and that. I'll just close it off. Hopefully I don't see any heat, you know, going past there and close off completely. So that's uh, Paz Pods. Uh, I picked this up off of uh, HHP and I think you get them on Amazon. And then also, the way that I'm going to wire everything up. So in typical, you're probably when you wire one of these up, you're probably going to go off like your cigarette lighter. Uh, I am going a different route, so I am needing to create pass-through wires and an a additional harness anyways. So rather than clutter up the wiring, I will add a whole nother harness in there with this guy. So this is also another one you can get on Amazon. It's a six relay box, so this will give me... I'll use four of these and then I'll have two more for, I don't know, lighting or something like that that I decide to do later on. So this is the one that I was, I just found it the best. Uh, it's a uh, 12 gauge wiring, if anybody's wondering on that. So, yeah. So I'm gonna get into the uh, install of this and uh, then we'll go from there. All right, so I just wanted to show real fast and uh, kind of explain a little bit of something on this. Uh, so this is the AEM gauge. Like I said, it has the yellow on it. The uh, red car, it's not going to look very good, but whatever. And then you have your two harnesses, one from there to there, and one from there to there, your, your OBD. And then it just has a red and a black right there that you have to worry about which will connect into my relay box but something i wanted to kind of mention on this so these are supposed to be bosch um maybe the that it doesn't even have so there's not bosch anywhere on it and the worry was that there people were thinking that they're getting a I don't know, counterfeit Bosch uh, wideband sensors. Hopefully that's not the case. What I'm gonna have, um, I think there's also, depending on how your tuning is, can wipe one of these things out extremely fast. And like I said, this, is, this card's not gonna have any cats on it. So if you don't do something like uh, deactivating your, uh, your heat up cycle for your cats where it's basically dumping fuel into your 
your your engine warming them up then that this is going to see that and the computer won't know what in the world it needs to do or what to do just a little bit of progress going on so we had to remove the uh the shroud that's on there I had to remove the wiper blades and that's just so you can get down to Let's see if i can get this on there that plug right all right this is special there we go okay so as you can see the uh wire that's coming off there that's going to the uh o the wideband sensor and then I just cut a slit in that. I just pulled the uh, the boot out, cut a slit in it, put the wire in, electrical tape the uh, wire to the other wire. That way so it won't go anywhere. And then just pushed it back in. Now for my case, I'm gonna have to actually put in more um, wires through that point. So I'll have to take it back out. But if this is all you're doing, then that's uh, about all that you have to do for that. And the rest is in the vehicle and then underneath the vehicle. As you can kind of see, I just have it kind of hanging there because I still have to free air calibrate it. So, on to the interior. So, now since my workbench is kind of a mess, so this comes out pretty simple. Uh, it literally just holds in with some clips. So you'll do that, you'll drop stuff on the ground, and then here's the one that I'm going to be modifying. You know, that just goes on there, you pull your clips back, pull it out. So basically you have, they're just in there. So go through, grab from the round end on the sides, and just kind of pop them out. Now in theory, that should do that. Okay, so I put it in there backwards, so it should intercept type thing in there. It's interesting. And there you go. So, that's how the gauge goes in there. So, get this installed back in the car, and we'll go from there. Actually, I'll run some wires up. I think I'm going to have to take a drill bit to this housing so that my wires can go through because... It's just not going to work with that. So, let me uh, drill a hole in the bottom of this and we'll go from there. Okay, so I have a three quarter inch hole right there. Should be big enough for the, uh, this, the uh, plugs to fit through. So, now we can install this. So, I have it just kind of ran down through there. Everything's loosely down there. I'll uh, coil up wires and fasten them after everything's in place. But I think it's about time to get the uh, get that put back in. So with that in, it's on to the wiring. So I've already uh, stripped it out that way, so I have a place to run it all. And you see, I got the rear seat out, and I've already removed the trim from that one. So, this is pretty easy. This piece right here just kind of snaps off. Then if you use one of these tools right here, you kind of just get underneath and pop those free so you can access and put the wires down there so that they're not in the way. Uh, this, I decided to not fully remove it just because it was going to be a, kind of a pill. It's going to be easier just to do it this way. So I have it pulled out that far, removed those right there so let me uh get the wire ran so i'm going to try and describe or explain the harness so 
really the only thing for this uh, AM Y band is going to be this plug right here. It has the red and the black, and it has the ground right there, which then runs over to this relay box, which then will turn on when the uh, key is in the ignition position. But beyond that, this is ultimately the harness for putting a supercharger on this car. So this plug right here, you know, you have the box that's gonna get rib nutted into the trunk, uh, not, not self-tap or screws, we're gonna use rib nets for this, uh, or uh, just a cleaner install. So this one right here, um, I'm gonna be, this is two unused, but one of these I already have plans for, have parts coming for that. And check out the next video in order to see that, uh, which then has its grounds right here. So this box, it comes with a gray wire, which is this one right here, uh, you know, extended, and that's your ground. That's for your relays to work correctly. You then have your power wire all into there, and that right there is just fuse taps so that I can find I can plug it into where I want to receive the power in an A switch that already gets power only when the ignition's on, so nothing will drain my battery. So beyond that, it's gonna go from there, trunk all the way over over to the kick panel, which is where this is gonna live. So I have the ground, I have three gauge potential hookups, which is hooked up to one of these. So all the, the gauges will all be ran off one. I have uh, another one, which only has one wire because I'm unsure that's my brown, which then uh, it's gonna live there, but it's kind of long enough to where I can put it uh, in the engine bay if I wanted to and then it just extend from there but this is for your boost controller and then you have this one right here which is the blue and the yellow uh, which will then control a coolant pump and a fan so that's gonna for now live behind the driver's side headlight uh, so let me get this installed. I'll show you kind of the path. Uh, like I said, this is way overkill if you're just installing a gauge, but if you're doing what I'm doing, which is installing the a blower on this car, uh, it's just setting up a proper wire harness is optimal way to do this. Uh, it's just a lot more cleaner install. So I'll get to you once I uh, get this installed on the car. The wire harness is completely ran, so those ones I was talking about, now like I said, right behind the driver's side headlight, runs up, runs down, and into the point right there. So that's for the pump and the fan, and then I have everything ran underneath here, as long, along with the gauge hooked up. It's ran underneath here and quick note for this if you peel this up It kind of just gives you access behind there and you can put it behind the plastic piece. that's behind there uh, Ran underneath the carpet right there Ran all the way back here underneath the carpet. You can see the wire right there ran underneath and ran Behind there, you can see it kind of going in. Then ran around. Have some uh, fasteners that are fastened right there. Along with, it is in there. Two grounds hooked up right there. And using this point right here for the ignition on, power on. Uh, I have two in there because I have a double bypass and I have it plugged in right there. So now I can uh, go ahead and get a free air calibration and get this thing tested. So on to the free air calibration. Let me just show you. We got the sensor right there just kind of hanging out. Make sure you pull the plastic cap off uh, when you're warming up this it does get hot enough to burn you so I'm assuming it'll melt that cap you don't want that to happen 
So, let's hop in the car and let's go to... So, let's turn the ignition to the on position. So, you have to go through your heat cycle. This can take a while. And there we go. So, it went through its heat cycle, so it's warmed up. So, you'll go into modes. And you're going to look for your cal. It's a cal. Yeah. That one right there. And select. and select so now it is free air calibrating and pass and there we go so after that so now let's uh let's get it started some Valvetronics design mufflers for this Dodge Charger. Till the next one, we're going to be installing these. See you around.